Hey YouTube, this is Jeff. And I'm Dana. And this is Dark Blue Metals. Today we're beginning the second half of our ammo can stove build. Today we should be able to complete the project. The first thing we need to do is start cutting the door and the holes for the air inlets. So let's get cracking. Okay YouTube, what I've done here is welded the handle in place and that'll basically just stay out of the way of the door. But doing that means I had to shorten the latch piece so it actually clears. Uh, normally this handle would not allow this latch to close if it were all the way up. So in the last clip you saw me removing a little bit of material from the bottom of this so the lid will in fact close back onto the ammo can. Now, this is a very loose fit right now because the gasket is still missing and I haven't installed the fire braid yet. Once the fire braid's in there, you'll actually have the nice locking action and a good seal for the stove. Okay, YouTube, here we have the pinwheel air inlet for the stove door. Now, as you can see, that's a pretty tight fit. It's pretty flat, but I did have to cheat. I will admit that when I TIG welded the bolt, on this plate it did cause some heat distortion so I let it cool down I had to come back in with the acetylene torch heat it up and then flatten it out which wasn't too big of a deal it was an easy fix but if I can avoid that in the future I'm definitely going to for the bigger pinwheel for the air inlet for the stove what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've taken and actually shaved down the top of the bolt and flattened it out significantly what that'll do is it'll allow me to create that dome without having to use so much heat I'd say I took about a half of the thickness of the bolt head off. Now when I weld that in, it shouldn't distort the metal nearly as badly.
things we need to do before we put the gasket on the lid to the ammo can is grind down any excess paint so we're working on bare metal. Okay guys, now this was a special request by the client. He actually wanted another source of airflow into the stove above the firebox. Now, the top of the stove is actually going to have a baffle in it. So what I did here was basically the same thing I did on the door, except this can go all the way around. There are no stops in it. And I'll show you that from the back. I don't know how much light I have in here, but basically all I did was cut out a circle and you can see how it lines up on the holes and I've got my two washers, my spring my tension nut so I can adjust the tension on the spring and the handle. As you can see we use some expanded metal to make a fireplace grate and that's being held in place by these angle iron brackets uh, there's four brackets on the bottom, there's four brackets on top, and the reason for the four brackets on top is, like I said before, the client wanted to have a baffle in here. So the baffle is free-floating, and it fits in pretty tight, and I want it to be removable. The reason this has to be able to be taken apart like this is so that you can take all your fireplace stack, whatever you're using for your chimney, and put it inside the stove while you're transporting it. So basically all of this becomes a useful storage space. Um, all of the legs, everything that you're going to need to put this together, all stores right inside of the ammo can. Now, um, I left a gap in here that's big enough to get a shovel into. Uh, we were originally going to set this up with an ashtray, but as I discovered, going through the fabrication process, the ashtray is not going to go all the way to the walls on either side. It can go front to back easily enough, but not left to right. And what happens is as you pull that ashtray out, things fall through the grate. It kind of falls into the center, and when you try to put the ashtray back in, you're going to have a lot of ash build up in the back, and it might not go all the way to the back wall and seat properly again. So I talked to a couple of people and they recommended just keeping it simple and using a shovel. All right, Dana finished cleaning the inserts for the legs. Now I have those TIG welded on. Uh, we have the feet TIG welded on. Those are um, angle iron feet. They're, I believe, four inches. And when I put the legs on the stove for the first time, I kind of realized something. We literally put a round peg in a square hole. And no matter how much tension or how much you can get these things to lock, the stove will wobble. And to eliminate that, what we did is we just took some simple angle iron braces and we went from the front legs to the back legs. The side to side motion was never really an issue, but the front to back motion, when you uh, rock it, it would teeter a little bit. Now, another nice thing about having this rack here, the way it is, you can put little pieces of wood or kindling or whatever you want on there and the convection from the stove should actually help dry it out, especially if it's elevated off the ground a little bit. But all in all, it did turn out to be a pretty stable platform. As you can see, that's not going anywhere, and I would be more than confident putting that in a tent. All right, last but not least, I made a couple of little basic fireplace tools. I have the uh, you know, a little hook for moving logs around, or I can't really call them logs, you're not going to fit a log inside that stove, but for moving the wood around inside. And I also made a shovel. Now the shovel's made, uh, the head is stainless steel. Um, that's really all I had laying around the shop. But uh, what I did is I offset the handle, almost as if it were going to be a riveted handle, but I did TIG weld that on as well. And what that allows me to do, come over to the stove here, I can really get in there and lay this shovel flat and go all the way to the back of the stove and then lift it out. So that should be pretty good for cleaning. All right, YouTube. Really, the only thing left to do is to paint the stove, and that's something that the client wanted to do himself. So, for me, this build is finished. 
I'm hoping he sends me a couple of pictures after it's painted just to see what it looks like. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I also wanted to take the time to thank the members of the YouTube community who posted various videos on building their own ammo can stove projects. I did get a lot of useful information and a lot of good ideas. And hopefully this video will add to that pool of creativity on this subject. Well, that's pretty much it for now. But join us next time at Darkwood Metals, and we'll have the hammer swinging and the sparks flying again in the shop. Take care and see you again soon.